Hey everybody, so I am back finally with another research video and this is the long-awaited necktie video. Um, the question that we need to ask is should we still care about selling neckties in 2023 or 2024? Are they still relevant? We all know that office wear and more formal wear kind of took a hit uh, with online reselling during the pandemic. So has it bounced back at all? It's an interesting question just because a lot of people went out of the office, they're working at home, they're not wearing ties as often, but with the pandemic over, people are out and about a little bit more, so, so has it changed? Is it still worth it? So what's interesting is that there are still thousands of neckties selling on eBay. If you look at solds in general, there's thousands even more listed, right? Um, a lot of neckties that are selling are selling for less than $10. So what we want to do today is try to figure out, you know, I'm not going to even pretend to tell you what your threshold should be as far as, well, selling a tie for $7 isn't worth it. Totally up to you. That's, that's not what we're going to talk about today. But we're just going to talk about what, like we usually do in these research videos, what are kind of the, if you're not going to specialize in ties and you're just, you're not going to have like a crazy volume of neckties. And so, you know, the $8, $9, $10 ties will add up. If you just want to hone your eye as far as looking at that section of the thrift store, what are some good names to look for? What are some features or um, styles of tie to look for that can help? So we're going to talk about some brands worth knowing, some different categories of ties that can be worth it. And then, of course, because I love vintage, we're going to talk about vintage ties. We're going to talk about how to know how old your tie is and things like that. So let's just go ahead. This might be kind of a long video. I reserve the right to split it up into two videos if I have to. But let's just go ahead and get started. We're going to switch over and look at our computer. Okay, so as you can see, we are starting our research on eBay. That's mostly where we're going to uh, look for values and look for brands and things like that. It's just the easiest way for me to show you what kinds of brands are good to look out for. First thing, I before we get started, I wanted to talk about the word necktie. Um, a, a lot of people just say tie. A lot of people say necktie as one word. Some people use necktie in two words. And so I was just kind of curious. I'm always torn about what to put in my listing. So I just did a quick Google search of, is it necktie or necktie, two words. And I got this interesting answer, you know, just somebody on the web who was into men's clothing. And he says, just as all bourbons are whiskeys, but not all whiskeys are bourbons. All neckties are ties, but not all ties are neckties. And that totally makes sense to me. I hadn't quite thought of it that way before. A tie just by itself can be an umbrella term, right? It covers lots of different ties. So you've got a bow tie. Now let's not even talk about the fact that he did bow tie as one word and someone else in the comments uses bow tie in two, two words. Okay, we have the bow tie, the ascot, the bolo tie. There's lots of different kinds of ties. So that would be you like your blanket term, like he says. In the U.S., the tie is usually just used as a shorthand for the necktie. Stylistically speaking, there's no difference between a necktie and a tie. I'm not sure what that means, but then it's all good. It's all what you prefer to call it. So <laughs> so it's, it's not like right or wrong. Like you should only, always say necktie or always say tie, but we want to think about what our buyers are going to be searching for. So I was going to do a quick search just on eBay for necktie. We get 150,000 results. The search is popping us into the men's section of clothing, men's accessories, okay? If I split up the words and search, I get 260,000 results. So my number of results is different, okay? Um, so if you, I, I would think maybe use necktie, 
but also maybe use neck and tie separately, or if you don't have room for the word neck, just maybe the word tie by itself. Um, you know, sometimes eBay search ends up um, kind of accounting for those things, but it's very interesting to see that the amount of results they're giving is going to be different. And so when I searched the, the two word one, a lot of the ones I had noticed were like this one, he, they have their word split up, right? So those are showing up. Um, obviously there's going to be more results. Like if I took out neck and I just put tie, let's see what happens there. Now keep in mind, we're in the men's accessories, um, category. So if you did this search like on eBay in general, you're going to get maybe things with ties, you know, like a dress that has a tie in the back or something like that. But for the most part, eBay kind of is understanding with best match. I've been doing all this tie research, so that's, that's what it's going to give me. Okay. So anyway, I just thought I would throw that out there. Okay. So let's start by looking at some brands. We are going to start just by searching the word necktie. And when we do that, it defaults to this category again under men's accessories ties. And so as you look and you see these crazy high prices, a lot of these are designer, but they're also lots, like big wholesale lots. So let's take out that word. We're going to minus L-O-T, right? So now we're going to find listings that don't have the word lot in them. Okay, and so that's giving us just hopefully, you know, some, some I notice people you would use the word bundle or something like that, but we can we can cope with that. So we've got some, you know, high price ties, but what we're interested in, let's go ahead and look at just pre-owned, like we would find at a thrift store. And then let's also look at solds. So we saw there was thousands of ties listed. But we have 18,000 that have sold with the word necktie. Okay, so let's just let's just scan through it and get an idea of some of these brands, okay? So first off, we see Rush Limbaugh, definitely one I've heard about in all my years of reselling, haven't ever found one. Um, now this price, it's interesting, this same exact tie shows up later in the, we'll talk about it later, but it shows up later at a much lower price in the 40s, but it was two weeks earlier. And it's the same listing, it's the same tie. So I'm not quite sure what happened there. Um, maybe they realized it was worth more. It, it sold and then they canceled it and then relisted it higher, or I'm not even sure. Um, but anyway, so Rush Limbaugh, we'll take a look at that in a bit. Zegna, a lot of the names that you're going to see not surprisingly, whenever we do these types of research videos, it always turns out like our designer names are always at the top when we're sorting highest to lowest. But we're going to also talk about some more maybe realistic ties that we'll find that might be worth your time as well. So we've got Chanel, we've got Louis Vuitton, there's another Zegna. Um, notice that word Quindici, we'll talk about it later. Hermes, of course. Zegna, Ralph Lauren, it's the purple label, which is one, it's their best label, right? Purple is their best. Uh, Versace, another Ralph Lauren purple label. Yoji Yamamoto, I don't know that brand at all, and I forgot to make a separate tab for it, but I saw it a couple times in the higher priced um, listings. Louis Vuitton, Gucci, Hermes. Uh, Versace, Armani. Okay, I'm just going kind of fast down through here because some of these names are just very familiar with what we've talked about whenever we talk about high value items. It's designers, right? High end designers. We've got a Ralph Lauren polo tie. Nice price there with a picture. We'll talk about that. Uh, Charvet, Hermes, Hermes, Hermes. There's another Yamamoto. That was the same name, I think. Okay, here's one we want to remember. Isaiah, Isaiah, I, if that's how you pronounce it. Um, 
So there's a few like higher end menswear names that we need to know, not just designers, but just menswear. And Stefano Ricci, that was a new name for me. What else did we want to talk about? Something else I remember in this list. This is interesting, Chick-fil-A history. That one was an auction, got bid up to $150. So we'll, we'll talk about novelty ties as well. Um, Vivian Westwood, Hermes, Brioni. Okay, that was another name I wanted to make sure you took note of. And then uh Vitaliano Pancaldi okay so that's a name we're going to research a little bit more as well because that comes up in some of the higher priced over a hundred dollar ties okay so let's just go one by one into a few of these and kind of see the the sell-through rates a little bit on some of these names so first off if we talk about the that Rush Limbaugh tie we have about 450 of them listed, and if we take a quick look, they are so colorful. They are gaudy, if you want to call it that. Um, no Boundaries is the name of one of the collections, so these will definitely stand out to you. I think a lot of them have that little metal chain in the back that holds the tie. And anyway, very, very bright, very, very colorful. So let's see how they sell. We have 273 in solds, okay? And we are ending recently. Let's start with the highest just for fun. It's that same first one, obviously comes up a little collection of four of them. One with a scarf and pocket square. And there's lots. Remember, we haven't we haven't erased out that word lot in in these types of listings. But then we get down to some um Individual ties selling for a fairly good price, seventy-five dollars. That one's new with tags, and seventy-five for a pre-owned. Okay, so you get the idea. That's one brand to keep an eye out for. Let's let's look at Zegna. Now, interesting. I I uh, was gonna say I've found different pieces of. Is it? Ze I keep saying Zegna. Is it Zenya? Now I can't remember. I think it's Zenya. Um, but. Anyway, I have found different pieces of Xenia clothing, but then this is the first time I found a necktie. Um, and it's just, it says it right down here, if you can see my little circle. And then that's the only place it is. There's no tag up here, higher up. I don't know if there ever was. It's got a couple condition issues, but I just thought I would test it out. So you can see it's like orange, gray, and black. Very interesting. So I have no idea what I'm going to price that one at yet, but that was my first Zenia tie that I found. Have not listed it yet, but if we take a look, we've got some other ones with Paisley. That one's like listed for 40, 165. So I'm going to have to kind of research a bit to see, you know, what kind of prices I can reasonably expect to get. Um, we are at 11,000 results. Oh, this is just searching Paisley ties. See, obviously I didn't prepare my tabs very well. I was doing research as I went. Um, but let's just look at Zenia tie Paisley. And we've got 2,000 results as low as $4 for an auction, but let's go high priced. Okay, one of those Quindici, mine's not a Quindici, but I'll tell you what Quindici is in a minute. Okay, so look at, some of those prices are so nice, right? And I'm assuming it would say Quindici on it, so let's see if, oh, this one's new with tags. Um, so let's see where it says it. Ay, ay, ay. Right when my computer bounces around like that. Okay, let's see if any of these pictures will. Okay, so it says Quindici right on the tie. So I found this information about it translated as 15. Sorry, it's cut off a little bit in my screen recording. Um, 
It represents the ultimate labor of love in printed fabrics, original designs from the collection's famed Officio Stile, <laughs> are engraved into 15 specially designed silk screens. These screens are hand carried to one of the last true hand printers left in the world located in the historic Lake Como region of northern Italy. It is here that the magnificent use of vegetable metallic and pigment dyes are expertly used to color the silk. Okay, so that's what makes those ties so special. So if you find Quindi, Quindi, what did I say? Quindici, then you have found some good money. Okay, but Xenia ties in general, let's take the Paisley out in our search. You know, we've got a few more. You know, some are just in lots. Obviously, different designs. Some of these are brand new at these higher prices. But I, there is going to be a fairly good amount also just in like the $50 range, I'm sure, as well, or even lower. Okay, just kind of like this basic striped one. 60 bucks, free shipping. Okay, it's a name to keep... Keep an eye out for, not just in ties, but in clothing in general. Let us go over to Hermes. Now, Hermes, very interesting. You know, I should have really set my tabs up better. But let's just look real quick. We've got 9,000 results for Hermes ties. Okay, and I will say this is of the higher end brand ties. It is a tie brand that I have found a handful of times. It's not impossible. Um, I did find the majority of them in, let's see, North Carolina. When I lived on the East Coast, the area in North Carolina I lived, Charlotte is a very, like it's this, it's a banking capital, right? Lots of banks, a lot of businessmen with ties. And um, that was reflected in the type of clothing that I found at thrift stores quite often there. So I found most of the Hermes ties there a handful in Seattle, and I may have found one here in Montana. I know I had a, a sale in 2020 for an Hermes tie that was damaged. It needed help, but it still sold for $30, even though it needed TLC. Um, but some of the other ones I sold, one had like a dog and a ball, and it was $75, the famous, the not famous, kind of the common horse bit, um, equestrian type style uh, tie sold. I have sold one for like 50. So I've had a handful of them over the years. So not impossible to find. So 9,000 for sale currently. But then as we look at solds, and you can kind of get an idea of what they look at, uh, look like. A lot of times there is a very not quite a novelty, but there are like a different theme to it. I guess you could say novelty. Like this one has elephants and geese flying in the sky. Okay, that's kind of different. So it is very similar. You'll, you might see ones that have a similar style to that, that type of novelty little thing. And it may turn out that they're Vineyard Vines ties because they have a very similar kind of um, look to them as well. But we will talk about them later because Vineyard Vines is one that I do keep a lookout for when I'm looking for ties to sell. Okay, so this is kind of the look for the Hermes ties that, you know, anywhere from $50 to $100. Some are limited edition. Um, this one with clouds, you can get an idea of what the label look labels look like. Now, one thing you might be concerned about is whether these are authentic, whether if you find one, whether it's authentic or not. I'm just kind of giving you an idea of the pricing. It's always fun to find an Hermes tie. It just is. Okay. Um, there are lots of information there's lots of information on the internet on how to find a, um, or how to know whether your Hermes tie is authentic or not. So here's an example, the Gentleman's Gazette. 
Okay. First of all, it talks about, um, you know, the, the fact that they're often counterfeited. All of the ones that I have found at thrift stores ended up being real. I don't remember ever finding one that was counterfeit. Um, but it's nice because there is a guide that helps you find, you know, there's very specific factors that will help you figure out whether it's real or not. Okay. It has to do with even the, um, what the tag looks like, where it's made. He goes into it more looking at the silk. It always has to be silk, not polyester. Um, this one was, you know, it's a certain feel to the silk and then the direction of the twill. That was always a big one that I remembered seeing, but I will let you read about that yourself. Okay. And I'm sure there's even videos about it on YouTube. Let's go on to another big designer, Versace 3700. Versace ties listed. Let's pop over to see how they sell. And then especially, there's all sorts of different designs to the Versace ties, if my computer will ever catch up with me. But it, as you can see, even on the listed ones, the ones with the Medusa head, any of these big, bold um, patterns are going to be higher prices as well. I can't believe my computer just doesn't want to do anything right now. Not good timing, right? To have slow internet. Okay. So here's some, that looks like the one we were just looking at. So I don't know if it was a realist. Okay. But if you look at some of these big, one of the, some of the words that you could use with Versace would be Baroque, the Medusa head, um, it's very colorful. Again, I don't know if you want to use gaudy, but Baroque might be a little more polite. Things like this, you see, very, um, very colorful. Okay, let's see. If we switch it, if my computer will cooperate, if we switch it to highest, again, here we go. Here's that. Okay, so I saw Baroque. They're saying Barocco, but I think they're getting it confused with Rococo and Baroque. <laughs> Baroque and Rococo. Anyway, and then another thing I wanted to mention, as we're doing this kind of research, take a look at the different ways people photograph their tie. Okay, so it's not always the same way. This person's very, has very good lighting, very good, um, it's, you know, it's kind of a messy layout, but you can see a lot of different parts of the tie and their lighting is really good. So you can see the colors, you can see the important part of the design and it definitely catches your attention, right? Then there's, you know, plenty of other people. This is probably all the same seller had a nice collection to sell. Um, some people do it more like that where they roll it up and just show the front part. Um, and then some people, as you saw, you know, just keep looking as we're doing this research. Everybody has a different style. Some, some do it like this kind of diagonal to fill that square. And then some do a collage so you can see the label and all sorts different parts of the tie. And then some people actually put the tie on a shirt or on a mannequin or something like that. But anyway, Versace is a name to keep in mind. Along similar lines is Pan Pancaldi. So it's Vitaliano Pancaldi. I'm probably saying that all wrong. Um, but anyway, you can see that there's a difference. You know, there's some very more subdued conservative type ties. But what I had noticed when I was researching, and this is a brand that I have not found before, Let's see, highest, Italiano Pancaldi. So that is, it's got a panther on it. Again, it's the very bright colored ties are the ones that seem to do the best in this brand. This one is a pleated tie. You can see the pleats in there. That, that I noticed that a few times with different brands, a pleated tie 
is good as well as the construction of the tie. There's um, something called a sevenfold tie. And in depending, you know, depending on the brand, that's usually a higher end tie. Okay. I know I say okay a lot at the end of my sentences. Okay, here's another pleated one. That's kind of cool. You can see that in there. Here's another kind of big design like that. So colorful, abstract, geometric, all sorts of different keywords we can use. Now, what other brand? I don't have any notes. Let's just keep going. Isaiah. Okay, so I have sold a dress shirt. This is, we're getting into more of the brands that are just high-end menswear or yeah, like better, a little bit more expensive menswear brands. So is Isaiah or I, yeah, I, I'm just going to say Isaiah, but I sold a dress shirt in this brand and that, um, sold pretty well. And so if we go ahead and look down at solds, we will see Isaiah Napoli. Okay. So some are in the hundreds, some are in the thirties. So let's see how many did we have sold? 184 sold, but some nice prices on some of these ties. So yeah, a lot of them are just going to be, um, you know, how eye catching the fabric is, but that doesn't necessarily mean <clears throat> that conservative ties don't sell well. Now this is Isaiah this one and the next one, Brioni, are going to be a little bit more conservative styles compared to like the Pancaldi and the Versace and everything like that. But it's more of like quiet luxury is what like a new um, keyword that you can use too. So that subdued look can also um, be what some people are looking for as well. Okay, another brand like I say along the same lines, Brioni, same thing. If you find if you find a dress shirt or a suit or a sport coat or something like that, the only thing I've ever found when Brioni is a dress shirt again, and that sold really well. And so same idea, Brioni, you can have, you know, prices anywhere from 25 up to a hundred or more. I would think $50 might be kind of we have a lot. Ooh, three of them for 400. Nice. Okay, very cool looking. But again, very subdued. So this person does theirs a little different. They have it rolled in with that um, sky background. But you can see how they did it here as well. Anything to kind of make the pattern stand out is what they've done. Very interesting. Okay. This was a name that was coming up in my searches that I haven't heard before, Stefano Ricci. And it seems to be along those same lines as Brioni and Isaiah. We have 654 solds. The very first one is a pleated one that sold for 45. Okay, again, it, we're seeing similar type prices. Again, pretty conservative looking ties. Okay, next up. Now this brand, this cracks me up. I don't know why this brand looks familiar to me. I feel like I've seen this tie and I either didn't Google it, like I saw it in thrifting, right? Okay, so it's, I think it's ketone, ketone, ketone. I did Google how to pronounce it and there's not a lot of agreement, but, um, I think the consensus finally was ketone, <laughs> but anyway, look at the label right here above my head. So ketone Napoli. Now, I don't know. It just looks so familiar. Like I saw a tie like this before and to me it just looked like, I don't know, some seventies tie and I didn't think it was any big deal. And so I'm wondering if I missed out on it, but now I won't forget it. So ketone, let's see. Again, we're in that 45 and higher 86. Look at that. Such a dark picture. And they still got 
$86 at auction. That one too, 115 Those are pretty dark pictures. Okay, so here's some more. A sevenfold, that's what I was talking about, 129 Very, very interesting. Okay, another brand that I have not found, Canali, Canali, but I do know that there are, um, like a Canali suit is something that's good to look for. So again, kind of a higher end, me higher end men's menswear brand. Again, we're kind of in that conservative looking tie. A lot of these nice higher end ties are made in Italy and they're silk. Okay, so here's some people who tried to auction it and only got their $14. So some are higher, some are lower, $50. Right, this one might not be as high as maybe, say, the Brioni. Not sure. Okay, and then, okay, this is where I wanted to... I'm going to stop for a minute because I didn't research this ahead of time. The next few ones are brands that are a little more common, I feel, that you could find at thrift stores. Um, but then um, I used to, like, we used to sell a lot more ties. We used to focus on it a lot more. And we did a lot more in, like, you know, a lower range of pricing. Um, like I said, we lived in places where there was a lot more many more ties available at the thrift stores than where I am currently now. And so I, um, but I was curious because as I was researching some of these ties in general, I like saw Robert Talbot and I saw some other ones that were selling in like $45, $50 range. And I was like, huh, should I still be looking for those ties? So this is me just doing this research now with you for the first time because I haven't researched this in, you know, 10 years or so. So let's see whether it's worth it. Now, first off, we're seeing that Robert Talbot, there's 14,000 results for Robert Talbot tie. So um, we look down, you know, a lot of them are going to be maybe a little bit lower price. But let's see if we go to, I'm going to go to pre-owned. And then I would also like to go to solds. And I'm going to go to highest first. Okay. So we only have 1,600 results in sold. So it is going to be a little bit trickier, I think, to sell a Robert Talbot tie. Now this starts off with a lot of seven. Okay, if you're getting ties cheap enough, maybe. Okay, a lot of them are, um, the higher numbers are lots. Cypress Point, this has a golf connection. It looks like another, another golf connection to that. Now this one is just, the picture is taken really nicely. Robert Talbot Studio. So there might be something to be said for how um, how how a, a a store on eBay presents itself and how much effort they put into staging and all that kind of thing. And then they can maybe do a perceived value type thing. And I just noticed that one says times four. Okay. That one doesn't, but this one says times four. So I'm thinking... Oh, no, no, no. That's the measurement. Okay. Whew. For a second there, I thought it was four ties, but I'm like, that makes no sense. It's four inches wide. Okay. Now, best of class. That is something I remember when we sold Robert Talbot ties, we did look for best of class. We have sevenfold. We talked about that being good. Another best of class, best of class. This is what the label looks like when it's best of class. It says Robert Talbot sold at Nordstrom, best of class, okay? So I'm thinking, look at these higher priced ones, that that might be something that you would want to keep an eye out for, is the ones that are listed as, or sevenfold, right? This one says it right on it. 
made in Italy, another sevenfold. So our high priced rubber tablet ones are sevenfold as well as best of class on the label. All right, very interesting. That is good to know. So I'm going to file that away as I do my thrifting and not just grab any kind of old Robert Talbot tie that I find. Now a similar brand that I wanted to research is Brooks Brothers. And Brooks Brothers, same thing. We used to sell quite a few Brooks Brothers makers tie ties probably in the um, $25 range or so. Let's see. I didn't do solds. I'm just getting us onto pre-owned. And then I wanted to do solds. And we'll start with the highest. We have 4,100 results for Brooks Brothers tie. I forgot to look how many there were. Okay. We are starting off with the lots, of course. So maybe I should... Go ahead and take that out. Okay, that's a tie clip. Uh, lots of other things that are not neckties. All right, here we go. Here's a solid silk one. This is pre-owned, but it's looking like they're getting, it said they were 138 and they're selling them for 130. These all benefit charity. Don't know if that made a difference. But all the same seller got these prices. 120. It is all the same seller. So I don't know. Benefits charity. Interesting. I'm trying to find a different seller. This nice geometric one sold for maybe 90. Here's a vintage antique Brooks Brothers black label solid blue, ninety dollars. I don't know. I feel like I haven't gotten my answer yet. A tartan plaid wool tie, geometric. So, hmm. I guess on that one, I still will hold out, and I will. I would double check maybe the style of it and make a decision. 13,000 available, was it like 4,000 something sold? So not great, great, but I don't think, you know, it took us out of that category. So now we're seeing all sorts of stuff. Okay, let's move on to Ralph Lauren. Now, Ralph Lauren, okay, I do come across polo Ralph Lauren ties fairly often. I bought these vintage ones recently um, they are plaid, uh, they have a couple issues, that one does, this one's better, but they were very, um, they're made in the USA, cotton from India, you know, it's just a very, um, summery looking, kind of madras looking type tie, and those are kind of from the 80s. But I do find Polo Ralph Lauren fairly often, so I was kind of curious about which ones to really look for. Obviously, the labels, I find Polo Ralph Lauren often. You know, if you find black label or purple label Ralph Lauren, even, I guess, in the neckties, that's going to be good as well. But let's take a look at some higher-priced ones, and we'll see what we can come up with. Let's go for highest price. We have a lot. Okay, we're just going to put up with a lot. We've got the purple labels like we talked about. Now, this one is a purple label. It has a picture, kind of a novelty tie. And I think that's going to... Oh, look at the teddy bear. How did we not know that there was going to be the teddy bear on one of these? He's holding a martini. That's awesome. Ralph Lauren with the teddy bear. Just buy it. Rugby Ralph Lauren. That's an interesting... That's an older label. I don't think they have that anymore. Purple label. This one's vintage. It's very... Um, it's linen. Just the little pony logo. 
it's kind of a short skinny tie 177 there's the polo bear now here's a handmade silk Ralph Lauren polo but it's got ducks it's like a hunt sportsman's tie okay anything in that kind of look I would definitely pick up more rugby uh, some lots some of these have tags there's some more this one has Native American on it purple label more teddy bears paisley's paisley and pheasants okay so I think if it's just something that's a little bit out of the ordinary it might do pretty well this one's wool with a, like a plaid or a hound's tooth check, it says 135. I like that. Orange, blue, and purple, silk paisley men's tie. Oh, look at that one. That's cool. Duck hunters in a birch bark canoe, new with tags. Okay, so definitely Polo Ralph Lauren, depending on what it looks like, depending on the label, even without the word polo any of the other Ralph Lauren labels can do pretty well we've got 3,200 that have sold lots of purple label though definitely that's a definite pickup this one is wool vintage new with tags and rare now I'm feeling like I have uh, this is my my little bin of shame <laughs> ties I need to list. Now oh, I did find one recently in my stash, but I think I pulled it out to list. And it was a Polo Ralph Lauren. You know what? It probably ended up in one of my bins over there as I was going to list it. Um, but anyway, when I looked that one up, it it was a golfer, right? So I don't think that was... It had a golfer on it. Not so exciting. This is a tennis one, but yeah, I would definitely look for the ones that have more to do with the, the kind of horsey, <laughs> equestrian hunt type look. And then the last brand we'll talk about is Vineyard Vines. I do look these up, and these are kind of, um, uh, kind of they're, when, when I was saying before, the Hermes ties usually had some kind of theme or logo or something like that. Vineyard Vines does the same thing. So if you can look at some of these close-ups, and this is a good idea to do for your first picture on these ties so they can see. This one is a boy's necktie. This one, another boy's necktie. Okay, so let's take a look at Vineyard Vines. I have sold quite a few Vineyard Vines ties. Like I said, I always reach for them, hoping they're Hermes. But then I'm like, ah, okay, it's Vineyard Vines. It still sells. I've got one right now. I need to list. Sorry. And this one is hockey skates and hockey sticks. And I will list that soon. It's it's in my to-do list. Um, I did look it up, so I was able to find others like it. Now, it's interesting because uh, a lot of times they're connected to maybe a sports team. Those do really well. Or they're connected to a, a school or a college. Those can do really well also. Vineyard Vines Men's Moonshine. Let's look at We've got 1,800 sold. Vineyard Vines, Vineyard Vines, Vineyard Vines. And some are, like, low prices, but... I think people were kind of running auctions. But you don't always have to undervalue a necktie. Okay, so Monterey Peninsula Country Club. That's the highest. Here's a whole big bunch of them. Ole Miss. Okay, Men's Silk Ole Miss Rebels. Here's one that has Rolex Pebble Beach logos on it so as you can see they're usually connected to a certain place these higher priced ones or a certain higher end type brand this one is the mr rogers trolley that's super cute okay so 
I hope that gives you an idea of some of the brands to keep an eye out for when you're out thrifting. There really is so much to say about selling neckties. I didn't realize how, how much it was, even though I, I kind of knew I had been putting off this video because I knew there was so much information to share with you. Um, I'm just going to finish up today's video with just a few notes about listing and shipping. Um, the next video will come out later in the week and we will definitely talk about vintage neckties and some other categories of neckties such as novelty and you'll just have to wait and see. But anyway, let's talk about the parts of a necktie. Um, I would recommend go ahead just Google parts of a necktie and there's all sorts of on Pinterest in different places. There's all sorts of um, diagrams such as this one. But basically, you know, you don't have to go crazy about the parts of the tie. I would just say um, it, it would help you if there's any flaws to know how to describe the flaws. So, for example, on my Xenia tie, um, I this little stitch that usually holds a tie together, you can see that stitch has come loose. It goes right here. And um, I can say that the... Now I forgot what it's called, a bar tack? Yeah, the bar tack is loose, okay? And I can say that. Now, I also wanted to point out, I said that this Xenia tie didn't say Xenia anywhere else on it, but I was wrong. It says it right there on this, the skinny part of the tie, <laughs> which according to the one I'm looking at right now, maybe calls it the tail. That's a good name for it. Okay, so maybe there's stains here on the tip lining. Um, this is the keeper loop. This thing in here, sometimes those are loose, so you can say the keeper loop is unstitched unless you go ahead and fix it. Um, anyway, so that just would kind of help you be able to describe your tie a little bit better. The information that I would put in a listing, it's fairly basic. Um, just like any other piece of clothing, you're going to want measurements. Measurements are going to be really important with a necktie. Um, you want to do the length and you just do the length from tip to tip all the way down. You just see how long it is. And then for width that I generally, it's just the widest part of the tie. So I just use these corners right here and measure right across there to see the width. And those are important measurements that people want to know because they wanna know if the tie is going to fit them. Um, what else do I need to say? So there's key words, like sometimes it can be challenging. This one's pretty easy because there's a paisley pattern in it, so you can throw the word paisley in there. Um, you know, but then there's plaid and there's checked and there's striped. Geometric is always a good word I like to use when I can't think of what else to call it. <laughs> um, geometric or Let's see, um, what was the other one I thought of? Well, here's an example of a necktie that is for the Mets, right? And it's a repeating pattern. You could say it's an all over repeating pattern, okay? Medallion is another good word to use. Uh, medallions or, you know, geometric, I like that. Novelty, I like that. I can't think of any others off the top of my head. But yeah, some of the, the interesting pattern ones, maybe it's just hard to come up with a name for them, but you could possibly also just see similar ones that are listed and see how they use their descriptive words. Okay, um, then I'm going to end this video with a little clip from Mr. Pishposh. We sold a tie and he recorded himself shipping it out. Sometimes you do get special requests from the customer on how they want their tie shipped. So don't be like us and totally forget by the time you ship the tie out. Um, <laughs> but try to accommodate them. You know, a lot of times they want it shipped rolled, not folded. You know, they want it in a box, not an envelope, whatever. So, or envelope, not a box. So just try to accommodate them as much as you can. But I will leave the footage of how Mr. Pish Posh handled this latest sale and it might also depend on the price that you sell your tie for. I am 
pretty sure our more expensive ties are going to end up being shipped in a box and for sure. And, um, anyway, so stay tuned. Like I said, later on this week, we are going to talk a little bit more about vintage neckties and other types of categories of ties that, that sell well. And please, please, please go ahead. Leave me a comment down below. What are some other brands? I know I missed some. If you have experience selling neckties, go ahead, leave me. I've already thought of a brand that I didn't mention today. Maybe some of you have thought of it too. And go ahead, leave a comment down below and let me know what I missed today. And if you have any other questions about neckties that I can maybe um, pop into the next video. Okay, thanks everybody so much for watching and I will talk to you later. Okay, I just want to show you quickly how we ship ties. Um, people want to get their ties so that they're not all wrinkled. This one, not too bad. I mean, it's a knit tie by Pendleton. Um, so it's fairly simple uh, to, to, to do this size. What I like to do is just start here. It's gonna go in this and then in this. So you wanna have as few folds as possible, um, especially important with like silk neckties. Um, basically just Get it to where we're going right about there, and then we like to put it in the plastic to help protect it. Like I say, with silk ties, it's a little more critical, but if we do it like this and so. Generally, that's going to stay roughly where we put it. Sometimes throw a little tape here to keep it in place so it doesn't get jumbled up during shipping. And with a knit tie, I'll use a poly mailer. Uh, if it was a, a more expensive silk tie, I might put it in a stay flat just to give it that extra level of protection, but that will be fine.